Hi guys, today we have a sequel episode about my DNA, but today we're gonna investigate it more from the ancient DNA matches side of things. Because the last video that is actually linked down in the description box was about my data of the compared to people living in currently in these countries and doing these DNA tests. But today we're gonna compare my DNA to old samples from archaeological sites that they have collected. Once again I'm not sponsored in any way nor am I trying to get you to do DNA tests yourself or anything. I don't know how valid th these things are and but I'm just sharing my results if anybody is curious. So the last DNA test that I took was used in this. I found this website called mytrueancestry.com and again not sponsored in any way. But okay, that is a site where you can upload your already existing raw data from your DNA test to various companies that you might have used and then you upload the data and there you get to see your own results actually super fast it took less than 10 minutes for me for this them to I don't know I guess they have a computer algorithm that just runs in my raw DNA data and then compares it with the data existing in their database. All the data that I'm showing here are from the free level that they offer. So of course every service you have to pay for something but this level, all the data here is from the free, free level. Then if you want to open up these specific features you get to, uh, I looked at the pricing that they had, they have different tiers and then you see more and more and more. The more you pay, the more you see. But mine is from the free. And I, I actually think that it's a quite good package that you get for free. And of course they want to wake up your curiosity and make you buy the tears after that. But that's only natural. Nobody can offer any service for free. So I totally get that. But let's jump in to my data, what do we see compared with my DNA from the ancient sites and the DNAs that they have dug out from the lost <laughs> earlier civilizations. So from the summary we see that my closest ancient population is a mixed Danish Viking to an early Slav. And there you see a rundown for other combinations. And the idea here is that the smaller number you get, the closer the match is. So everything below 10 is more relevant than going for further from that. And it gives you these nice historic bits of information about these populations that I'm linked, like the, the Danish Vikings and the early Slavs, it gives maps and, and information and stories behind that. And of course, we could have assumed with, with my DNA being 18% Scandinavian in my uh, original DNA test, uh, this was no big surprise to me to see the the Viking part but still I didn't know what to expect and I was really interested to see this this data and actually some of these things are things that I've never even heard about like the Scythians and so on top of getting to know more about yourself uh, this is a good history lesson also and once again I don't know how accurate or how valid this thing is but for me it's enough that I find it highly interesting and it gives you all these explanations that how the numbers mean and those 
most of my numbers are on the 10 side so so they link to the ancient ancestry and the higher the number gets the further the connection goes that's basically the idea here then it shows maps and different um, time periods and where the connections are on the map on, on different times like medieval age and so on then you get different data and the more you upgrade your account the more you can see of these breakdowns and for example these haplo groups um, some of the matches you can see on the basic level but as you can see here most of them are hidden and you can get to know more when you update your account and which is totally fine by me you also do get some shown hits in the free level which is super nice that you get to see actually quite a lot of data even on the free level then it shows the genetic matches with the haplogroups uh, breakdown and, and it compares that how, how much my data is compared to other people that are on this site and, and what is the distance between the genetics and shows different civilizations and gives this bits and pieces of the historical information which is quite nice and the further more you go into these tiers and, and you pay you get to see more individualized data linked to specific per people that their ancient DNA has been run down into this system so you get to find more and more and the thing that I really liked seeing in this data was the ancestral timeline piece and here we can see that most of the matches are hidden but some of them I can see the most recent is is from Finnish churchyard uh, from 1727 but the most ancient matches seen on my timeline are from 2700 BC this Gotland battle axe from Sweden and the ancient Gotlander battle axe so so these are actual people's DNA that have been dug out and added but there are but I was surprised uh, how long these things go there's a bell breaker from Oxford and 2150 BC and quite several matches from the Viking era we do have the Viking Age uh, Russian match and several others from the Viking era and it shows this matches on different forms so on the timeline and here on the map and the ancient sample breakdown here tells the shows the percentages of the matches and breaks them down into different groups and what surprised me was the Celts 7.93 percent there are all the early Slavs Saxons so I think that this shows a lot more bits of information than the modern DNA matches but the majority for me it was the Sw Swedish Vikings of 21 percent which is linked and also then the Danish Vikings so majority of my ancient uh, DNA matches is to the to the Vikings and then it also breaks down the matches by different eras and then to different uh, groups and and you get to go this isn't the easiest to use you have to hover the 
the mouse on top of to see each bit but it just rolls these connections through through different areas then it also shows you the closest genetic modern population matches and here when we talk about Finnish, Finnish uh, DNA. Uh, the Finnish DNA is is funny in a way that it's so different between from the western parts where I'm from and between the eastern parts. And if you look at my uh, modern population genetic matches, the closest I am to southwest Finnish, which is no surprise to me. And then breaks down to Finnish but then I'm closer to a Czech than the Eastern Finnish population. And that to me was really interesting. Then we do have the Estonian, Polish, South Polish and East German connections to on this current day modern populations. But to me, that's so funny to have the Czech, uh, you know, the part of, from Czech uh, before the Eastern Finland, which is actually a good thing, because the East, Eastern Finnish genes ain't the best in a way, because they do have also a lot of health issues that are common to the, that era, and they have inherited diseases. So <laughs> I think even health-wise, this is a good thing for me to have more of the Scandinavian genes and the Western Finnish genes in me rather than the Eastern Finnish when because you know I'm getting older day by day but here was my rundown of my ancient DNA so uh, the majority of me is a mix of Danish Viking and an early Slav that's the closest uh, mix that, that my DNA matches to but it has a lot of Viking influence in my DNA, so I don't know, I kind of find that super exciting. Because when I started this whole path of doing genealogy and looking into my, uh, my ancestors, we started to track the people there, and, and for me even to get the 18% of Scandinavian, which uh, I spoke about in my first video, was a huge surprise. But then when, when I did this comparing with the ancient DNA results, I, I was... I don't know what I was expecting, but it was super Viking-y and I'm really happy to see that data. So if you have done or tried this website, let me know what you thought about it and I would be happy to hear about your results and once again this was just part of things that I wanted to do and I'm not suggesting for anybody that you should do the same. Do your research before you give your DNA to anybody and don't take anything that provided here as a pure fact. Take everything with a grain of salt, because that's the way I'm looking at these results also. But until next time, bye guys!